Hi everyone, I'm Anne-Marie DeWitt from Fireside Games. Um, I'm the designer of Munchkin Panic, which is a hybrid game of Castle Panic, which was designed by Justin DeWitt, and Munchkin, which was designed by Steve Jackson of Steve Jackson Games. Uh, we have the license from them, so everything is official and copacetic. So um, I'm just going to explain a little bit about how to play Munchkin Panic. The idea is that you're working together enough to defend the castle towers in the center of the board against the Munchkin monsters who have invaded the, the Castle Panic world as they try to take the towers down. But it wouldn't be a Munchkin game if um, it were just pure co-op. So of course we have to have some backstabbing. Uh, and we have certain cards that allow you to do that, which you will actually find in your castle deck. So the castle deck looks like that. Those are the backs. That's how you know you have the castle cards. Um, and there are three different types of castle cards. You have your hit cards, which are those. These you'll recognize from Castle Panic in terms of the function. These can hit in different areas of the board. This is a red archer, so it hits in the red archer area here. And you tra track damage just like you do in Castle Panic. So if I played this Red Archer, I could either um, kill or slay this potted plant because it only has one health point uh, and keep it as a trophy. Or I could choose to hit the face sucker and rotate him down so that I'm tracking the damage just like that. Um, you'll also notice that on these monsters there are gold dots. That tells you how many uh, pieces of treasure those monsters are carrying with them. And when you kill or slay the monster, you'll be able to go to the treasure deck, which that's what the backs look like for the treasure deck. And uh, these treasure cards give you different bonuses. But before I move on to the treasure deck, I'll finish talking about the castle deck. In addition to the hit cards that you'll recognize, um, if you're a Castle Panic fan, um, you'll also recognize the specials, and these have kind of one-off um, uh, effects that they have in the game. This one is called Help Me Out Here, and um, this one is actually, it's, it's, a, it's a nice example of how we've taken um, Munchkin and created this hybrid game. Um, so Help Me Out Here is a card from Munchkin. It has a whole different effect in the game of Munchkin, but in Munchkin Panic it allows you to compel uh, a fellow player to show you their hand and you can take one card out of their hand to help slay a monster. But you can only take it out of their hand if it actually helps you slay a monster. So uh, there's some really fun ways, I won't give away all the fun ways you can use this card, but um, it's a nice example of taking something from Munchkin and borrowing it and, and changing it up so that it works in this new hybrid world. Uh, we also have the third type of card is a curse. This is my favorite curse. It's chicken on your head. And when you play this card, it forces all the other players to take a, um, one of their treasure cards at random. They can't see what they're selecting and they have to put it on their forehead like this. So they have no idea what's on their forehead. And you get to look around at all the cards and pick um, the best one for your hand and you get to keep that one. So. That's a really fun uh, card to play. There are three other curses that you can play, so that's a, a card type in the castle deck. And that's where some of that um, backstabbing comes into play. Um, also with some of the special cards, like help me out here. You know, that's, that's not real friendly. You know, you're forcing someone to help you slay a monster. Um, so I also wanted to show kind of another example of how we've infused Castle Panic um, with uh, Munchkin. And that is... Um, uh, the, um, what used to be the Barbarian card in Castle Panic is now the Super Munchkin card. So we took Spike from, from Munchkin and the Super Munchkin uh, name and then uh, we um, uh, just kind of overlapped it with the effect of the Barbarian. So this, this will slay one monster in the game the way Barbarian does in Castle Panic. So those are, those are your basic types of castle cards and the basic types of treasure cards are uh, Weapons, potions, and specials. So first I'll talk about weapons. This is the Rapier of Unfairness. And basically what a weapon does is it boosts one of the hit cards. So you can play just one weapon card with one hit card. So if I played the Red Archer, I could also add the uh, uh, Rapier of Unfairness to add an additional point of damage. So now instead of a one-point attack, now I've got a two-point attack. 
So that's how the, the weapons work. And, and there are different levels of attacks and, and uh, a lot of variations. Some are effective only in certain rings, some in all of the rings, um, and uh, doing more and less points of damage. Uh, let's see, the next thing I want to tell you about actually are the potions. And here's a potion card. This is the, the potion of halitosis. You can see from the castle icon there that it, it's effective in the castle ring. And you can use this to uh, damage a monster anywhere on the board except the forest for two points of damage. And the nice thing about the potions is you do not have to use hit cards with them. So it's a way of, of getting some extra uh, damage on those monsters. The last type of treasure card is a special, and just like the specials in the castle deck, these are kind of one-offs that, that do various things for you. Um, this is Loaded Die. It allows you, when you're placing monsters in the forest, it allows you to place it anywhere you want. So it's not, not up to chance. You get to actually put it where you want it to go. So having said that, let me just kind of talk a little bit about the order of play. Um, the order of play for Munchkin Panic is a little changed up, um, but it definitely borrowed heavily from, from Castle Panic and then augmented by Munchkin. Um, so the first thing you'll do is a little hand management. You've got your full hand, and depending on how many players you have, you'll have different hand size. Uh, let's say, for example, we have um, a game of four, which very often you do. Um, you would have a hand of five of the castle cards. And then you also, as part of setup, you get one um, treasure card as well. So that, that's kind of a starting hand for a four-player game. Um, the first thing you can do is discard one of your castle cards and then draw it for, to a full hand. So uh, I might, for example, see this green swordsman. As you can see on the board right here, there are no monsters in the green swordsman area of the board. So I might choose to just discard this and get another castle card for my hand. Now usually you play open hand for Castle Panic. This is, you know, uh, semi-cooperative, so you don't want to uh, uh, let people know what your plans are. So we do recommend um, playing, playing closed hand with Munchkin Panic. Uh, the next thing in order of play is Give Charity. You can have no more than three treasure cards in your hand at one time. If you have more than that, you have to give the excess. So let's say, for example, I had five in my hand because I'm um, killing lots of monsters, um, I would have to give my additional two to the person with the lowest number of hit points in monsters. So, for example, if I had killed this potted plant, he gives me one, one point in my Master Munchkin total point count. So, um, if I had one, and let's say, you know, another opponent had zero, another had three, another had four, the person with zero would get my two excess treasure cards, and that's me giving charity. Now, if I'm the lowest, then I have to just discard the treasure cards like that. Uh, the next step is play cards, negotiate, and get trophies. And this is, this is where I can start killing monsters. I can start doing my card combos, like my red archer with my rapier of unfairness. And I actually drew another uh, red archer when I did my discard and draw. So I could play this other uh, red archer. And now I've got a three-point hit on that face sucker. So now I can slay that face sucker, and I get to keep him um, in, as my trophy. And so I put in, him in front of me. Now I've got four points in uh, monster trophy points. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I can do. Um, let's see. Oh, I have the Super Munchkin, so I can slay the gazebo, and that's a good thing because you get no help when you slay the gazebo. <laughs> so I would use my Super Munchkin on him, and so these would be discarded in their appropriate discard stacks, treasure cards with treasure cards, castle cards with castle cards. And at this point, I've got, we've got the squ Squidzilla out there, and I might say, okay, I... Um, I can do two points of damage on him, but I need two more. Uh, does anyone else have a card that could that could help me slay that monster? And someone might say, "Yeah, I've got I've got a card." Um, and it, again, it, ha it has to be just one card from one other player. It can't be card combo from someone else. It's just one card, one other player. And so they might say, yeah, I've got a card I can play that does two additional points of damage, but what will you give me for it? You know, so in Castle Panic, you've got trading. It's nice and friendly. With Munchkin Panic, it's negotiating. I'm not helping you out unless there's something in it for me. And um, so if I, you know, I might say, well, okay, I want that body because those 
points count toward my total at the end. But I'll get, it comes, he comes with two treasure. You can see by the gold dots there, he comes with two treasure. So I might say, all right, I'll, I'll give you the treasure if I can keep the body. And let's say, for example, you know, the other player agrees to that. So then I would get to keep the body and the other person would get the treasure. Let's say my imaginary friend over here <laughs> gets two uh, treasure cards. Now, my friend, we keep them face down because you actually don't put the treasure cards into your hand until the next step, which is to add treasure to hand. That keeps someone from being kind of the runaway leader and just continuing to pound and take monsters and they have this huge lead on you that you, know, you can never, never overcome. Um, another thing I want to mention about negotiating is it's limited by the imagination of the players. I played with um, a couple of sales people at Gen Con and one said, all right, um, I'll help you, you can have the body, you can even have the treasure, but I want you to run my sales reports for a month. And uh, the other salesperson actually agreed to that. So um, we really encourage people to you know, negotiate you know, for whatever's meaningful for you. It can be inside the game, it can be outside the game. You know, the whole point is to have fun. So uh, create some negotiation that creates fun for you also. Um, after you add treasure to your hand, um, then you move monsters. So I'm going to put some of these monsters back on the board so I can illustrate the movement. Um, so at this point, I'm going to put this guy here. Um, so these would they move one space toward the castle, and then when they hit a castle structure, so this face sucker, um, he's at a three. He's going to destroy that wall when he moves forward, and take one point of damage, so I rotate him down to two. Whatever's pointed toward the middle of the castle, that's, that's your active uh, number of um, health points uh, for the monster. So he's at a two now. Um, I, I do want to mention, now, on the next move monsters phase, if he moves in, then he's going to take out this tower and take another point of damage. He still has one uh, health point left, so the next time he moves, he's going to rotate clockwise. And on his, he'll take out that, la that tower and take his last point of damage, just like that. Um, so, but you, you get a couple of turns to try to kill him before he's taking down all, all of your towers. Now, you'll also notice that when he hit the wall, he took the point of damage and destroyed the wall, but he stayed in the swordsman ring. He doesn't actually move into the castle ring until the next move mon monster's phase. Another thing I want to mention at this point, too, is... Um, You'll, you see, most of the monsters will go down to one point of damage. There are some that their lowest is a two. For example, here's a Squidzilla. He's, um, he's got four, three, two. So when he gets down to that last, the two points of damage, he no longer takes damage from running into structures because the castle structures only deal one point of damage, and it has to be two points dealt out at the same time to destroy the, the four-point monsters. There is a three-point monster, it's the Plutonium Dragon. He has, his last point of value is three. So he ha you have to have a hit value of three on his final, um, the final assault on him to take him out. So um, the last thing that you'll do in your order of play is place monsters. Now this is a little different from Castle Panic. In Castle Panic, you draw two monsters, and it could be monster effects or monsters. It doesn't matter as long as you're drawing two out. Now veteran Castle Panic players know that you know very often one of the pieces that you draw might be draw three more monsters. You know, uh, draw the the um, uh, the Goblin King, and then he comes with three more with him. So you know, it's it's two in theory. Um, but uh, for Munchkin Panic, you have to place three monsters. So if I draw, you know, I drew the Leprechaun, and the way you place him is by rolling the, oh, the very special, I've got to show you this, the very special, it's a custom uh, Munchkin D6, and this is the only place you can get this color um, is through uh, purchasing Munchkin Panic. So if you like to collect all the Munchkin dice, then you know, this is another reason for you to pick, pick up the game. But anyway, so you roll the die, it's a two. So that tells me which arc of the forest the monster comes in at. So there's the two. I'm going to place the leprechaun right there with his highest uh, point value pointed toward the center of the castle. Um, I have to keep doing this as long as I draw, keep drawing monsters. There's the wannabe vampire. Roll and place him also. So I've placed two. I need to place a third one. Let's say the next thing I draw is this curse. This is all monsters move clockwise. If I draw that, all the monsters on the board are going to move one space clockwise. 
potentially fouling up any of the plans that, that um, me and my fellow players have made. Um, moving from one color, say the leprechaun moved from red into green, uh, potted plant squidzilla did the same thing. So I may, I may have had a red swordsman that I was going to use on that squidzilla with a rapier of unfairness and now he's out of, out of play. So, um, now that was the third monster token that I drew, but it's not a monster. I didn't place him. So I have to keep drawing. Let's say the next one that I drew is this huge rock. So you'll recognize the art and the name from Munchkin, um, but the function is pure castle panic. Uh, it's the giant boulder, basically. So I'm going to roll the die. That's a four. So that monster, the, or that rock, is, huge rock, comes in this way. Now let's say, for example, I had the squidzilla in that arc. It would crush that squidzilla and any other monster that's in that arc, but it doesn't stop until it takes out one of our structures. So in this case, it would be a wall. Now, if the wall had already been down and the, the huge rock came out, then it would take out our tower. And if that tower had been gone and the huge rock came, then it would just go all the way through into the next arc and take out that, that tower. And if that tower was gone, it would take out that wall. We like to call this the boulder highway. You know, <laughs> that's, that's really not a good thing, but when you've got a nice boulder rolling through it, it doesn't hurt you at all. You know, you kind of appreciate that. So. Um, that's how the, the um, huge rock works. Now, in Castle Panic, there are four of these. In Munchkin Panic, there's just one, uh, which is a good thing because there are also no uh, brick and mortar cards, so you cannot rebuild your walls. In Munchkin Panic, you get your walls and towers, and that's all you get. So, you'll have to be more careful with your walls and towers. Um, so, you'll notice I have drawn two curses and resolved them, but still, I only have two monsters in the forest. So I have to keep drawing. So let's say, for example, my very next one. Oh, it's a plutonium dragon. So get, get a good shot of that one. And I roll to place him. It's a three. We place him out in the forest. And that is the end of the order of play. And basically, how you play Munchkin Panic. The most important thing you need to know about the More Munchkin Mini expansion that comes in Munchkin Panic is you no longer have to protect the towers against the monsters. All you care about is points. You want to have the highest uh, point value in slain monsters. That is it. So with that change, the towers actually kind of become a, tower, a, a timer in the game. Um, if you're ahead in points, you might actually want to help the monsters take out the castle towers. And fortunately, we have helped you with the More Munchkin Mini expansion to do that. So let me show you what the expansion includes. The More Munchkin Mini expansion includes seven character cards. And you'll notice that these are based on the races and classes from Munchkin. They all have a special ability that is unique to the Munchkin Panic world, as well as a nemesis. So, for example, if you are playing the elf, you can draw an extra treasure card when you help slay a monster. So that's in addition to whatever you've negotiated. But you cannot slay the face sucker. That's your nemesis. And you'll recognize a nemesis when it comes out on the board by the black border. So that will help you uh, to trigger the thought that, you know, that might be one of the nemesis um, for a, a player in the game. So um, that's how the, the characters work. The mini expansion also includes a new castle card called Illusion, and that has a really cool effect. It allows you to discard a monster in the swordsman, knight, or archer ring of the board. So, for example, I could just discard this leprechaun, and allows you to replace it with a monster elsewhere on the board. So, for example, King Tut is threatening this tower. He's going to rotate clockwise on his next turn and take out that tower. So, I want to take out that King Tut and put him where the Leprechaun was. So now I have additional opportunities to slay that monster and take his treasure. And he is no longer threatening my tower. So, uh, that, and that could be a good thing um, if I need more time for getting points. The More Munchkin Mini expansion also includes two weapons, the Dagger of Treachery and the Chainsaw Bloody Dismemberment. They both do three points of additional damage. And again, these are weapons, so they have to be used with hit cards from the castle deck. Um, the three points of damage with the Dagger of Treachery must be in the Swordsman Ring, but the three points of damage with the Chainsaw of Bloody Dismemberment can be dealt anywhere on the board that uh, your hit card is effective. So, 
Um, the More Munchkin mini expansion also includes a new card type that I'm very excited about. It's the Monster Enhancer. You'll recognize these Monster Enhancers, including the art from Munchkin, uh, but they have different effects in the game. So, um, um, they all have slightly different things, so we won't go into detail on all of them, but uh, let me explain in how Intelligent Monster Enhancer works. So, this, if I play this card, it allows me to add two points of health to a monster under attack and then draw a treasure card. So, if my opponent, for example, is attacking this potted plant, I play my Intelligent Monster Enhancer and now I add two points of damage. Now, they have done one point of damage, so it's, you know, essentially at zero. So I'm going to add one and two. And the way you add points of damage beyond whatever health they have um, originally is just by adding points. Or, sorry, um, by adding pennies. Uh, pennies are not included. You have to supply those yourself. I'm sure you have many in a jar. <laughs> so um, that's the way, basically, the Monster Enhancer works. Then I would get to uh, draw my treasure card for playing that as well. So, in addition to beefing up the monster, keeping the, my opponent from getting another kill and more treasure, I've gotten a treasure card and I bought more time um, for, uh, um, for the monsters. So, um, uh, that's basically how a monster enhancer would work in the game. It really changes things up. You're really just focused on being the person with the highest number of points and slain monster at the at the end of the game. That's what the More Munchkin Mini Expansion is all about. It's all about being the best Master Munchkin you can be. So I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I know I have uh, playing it with lots of people.